today I wanted to speak to you about elevated homocysteine. Many in the plant-based world have heard about homocysteine and that how it should be measured to make sure that you're getting enough B12. And I'm gonna explain what homocysteine is, the risk of having it too high, and some other ways you can um, measure your B12 as well. So let me pull up my notes here. First of all, what is even homocysteine? You hear about it, but you're like kind of vague on what it actually is. So homocysteine is an amino acid. Now it's not one of those 22 amino acids that actually are utilized to build proteins. Um, there's about 140 what they call non-proteinogenic amino acids. These are amino acids that we get from other sources, but it's not that your body can make, but it's not um, used to build the protein structures. So don't need to do a biochemistry lesson, but just to know that it is an amino acid and it's an intermediate, meaning it's in the middle of the metabolism of methionine. Now that is an essential amino acid that we get from our diet and it's plenty of methionine in the plant-based world as well. So you get nuts and seeds, legumes, whole grains, all of that. So no worries about the methionine. Now it's an important kind of to describe the overview of homocysteine metabolism. First of all, methionine metabolism, it's important there. So methionine is first converted. I'm just gonna get a fancy word here, guys. Bless, forgive me if I'm saying words you're like, I don't know what you just said, but I just wanna talk about a three important pathways first. But methionine, methionine is first converted to what they call S-adenosyl methionine or SAM for short. It's um, in various biochemical reactions it's used. Um, SAM, it donates what they call a methyl group um, to different various biochemical reactions. And then it becomes what they call S-adenosyl homocysteine or SAH, okay? And then you take the SAH is then hydri hydro hydrolyzed, there we go, to produce homocysteine. So methionine to homocysteine. It's just a little, there's some important pieces there that we need to understand. Then homocysteine, right, can be remethylated. Um, so it can be converted back to methionine and called what we call remethylation. And that requires folate, which is vitamin B9, and B12 as cofactor. So that's the piece there that's important around the B12. Um, if you're eating a whole food plant-based diet and eating plenty of dark green leafy veggies, you should be getting plenty of folate. We just want to keep that in mind. And then there's one other pathway. It's called the trans um, sulfuration pathway. So basically, homocysteine can enter that pathway and then produce cysteine, which is another amino acid. This requires peroxidine or B6. Okay, so when you look at elevated homocysteine, many times people go, oh, you have either a B9, B6, or B12 deficiency. Um, and that'll come to be an important here in a minute. But basically, anytime you're a homocysteine, is above, especially above 10, that seems to be where your risk factors come into play. And there's a few things that we need to be mindful of. Elevated homocysteine can increase risk for heart disease and things like stroke. And I'll get to the mechanisms here in a minute, or proposed mechanisms. But um, that's what we call hyperhomocysteinemia, meaning it's just high, high homocysteine in the blood. And um, again, just wanna speak to that in a, in a minute, but what are some of the causes other than a few of the vitamin deficiencies? Well, like I mentioned, it's folate, vitamin you know, B9, vitamin B12, and then vitamin B6, which I just spoke to the pathways of each of those. And then there could be some genetic factors. So you may have heard of MTHFR gene mutation. So it's fairly common, but you'd, the big problem would be if you have both of them from your parents, because then you're having a little bit uh, less uh, efficiency in the conversion of homocysteine to methionine. You know that when it went back to methionine, that other essential amino acid. Sometimes chronic kidney disease can be a problem because the kidney is used to um, remove homocysteine in the blood. So that could be an issue. Uh, hypothyroidism, meaning that your thyroid is underactive. However, that should be alleviated if you're being treated appropriately with medication. And then there's certain medications like methotrexate, which is a common medication utilized in autoimmune disease um, because it can interfere with folate metabolism. So many times when you're prescribed methotrexate, you're also given um, a higher dose of folic acid, um, which is the vitamin, a synthetic form of folate in the vitamin supplement. 
Um, there's other like anti um, uh, epilepsy drugs and those can sometimes increase homocysteine. Those are the ones that are used to treat seizures. Um, also niacin, believe it or not. So high doses of niacin can also elevate homocysteine. Sometimes people will take high doses of niacin to help with their lipids, uh, cholesterol and triglycerides. So you want to be very mindful of that if you've recently increased your niacin uh, supplementation and you're now you have elevated homocysteine. I might want to talk to your doctor about that. Also fibrates. So fibrates are um, used, they're used to lower lipids as well. Those can also increase um, your homocysteine levels. And then some other things just associated with lifestyle, um, smoking, um, excessive alcohol consumption, and because it kind of affects the folate metabolism again. Uh, and in some individuals, there's been some interesting studies suggest that excessive coffee consumption and what would be excessive coffees, coffee consumption? Probably more than one or two cups a day. Um, other skin conditions, interesting, psoriasis has been shown to have some elevated homocysteine levels, inflammatory bowel disease, like Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. This is probably related to the decrease of absorption of your B vitamins. And then there's some really rare genetic disorders like um, homocystinuria. It's a uh, where the body doesn't um, process the amino acid methionine very well. And that can lead, of course, to elevated homocysteine. Um, sometimes they say age. I don't know. Uh, other things like um, lupus, uh, certain malignancies, sometimes being in a postmenopausal state can uh, elevate homocysteine. I think that might be related to choline metabolism. And if you're, um, when you have low estrogen, you don't, Anyway, you can't use choline very well. And especially if you're coming in from a, sometimes you can have a choline deficient diet. And the important thing to understand, choline is really important for nerve health and also removing lipids from the liver. So if you're finding that you have fatty acid, or excuse me, fatty liver, sorry guys, had a, had a phone call there, it kind of disrupted there. Um, anyway, that, that might be something to consider. But um, outside of that, just know that sometimes menopause can mess with the that as well. Good old menopause. Um, okay, and then, so I want to talk to the mechanisms of why an elevated homocysteine, uh, homocysteine above 10 uh, could be an issue and just speak to the, um, like I said, the mechanisms of why you have an increased risk of heart disease or heart attack or stroke. So they think there may be some um, issues with endothelial dysfunction. Now remember that's that really thin layer of cells inside the arteries. Um, and because the um, elevated homocysteine has shown to impair the production of nitric oxide, and that's the, you know, the chemical that actually relaxes and dilates your blood vessels. And so if you think about that, it can cause reduced blood flow and then potentially vascular injury, oxidative stress. So homocysteine can promote the production of reactive oxygen species, um, which can also increase oxidative stress. And then that can affect, of course, the endothelial cells and again, lead to atherosclerosis um, or the building up of plaque within the arterial walls or the stiffening of the arteries. Um, it also can cause what they call promotion of thrombosis. Um, so homocysteine can increase the tendency of blood to clot. Um, that's what the thrombosis means by enhancing what they call platelet aggregation. So platelets are used in the body of the body to help clot the blood. So let's say you cut your hand, um, the body sends platelets to help um, aggregate or clump together and start the clotting process. And that's an important thing to know also with heart, a heart attack. Um, sometimes the, the injury, let's say you have a little plaque that flicks off inside one of the heart arteries and it shoots down stream. Well, that open wound, just like you have a cut on your hand, can cause the platelets to aggregate and to clot, which can cause a heart attack. So um, anyway, just wanted to speak to that. And then inflammation. So elevated homocysteine can induce inflammation within the blood vessels. Let's see here. Also, you can have some alteration of collagen and what we call elastin. So homocysteine can interfere with the cross-linking of collagen and elastin, which is really important for the structure of your blood vessels. Um, you know, if you don't have good cross-linking, you know, if you think about the, um, like a basket that's woven, when you have the baskets um, been damaged and there's, 
some of the strands are broken, you can think of it becomes weaker in that area. So the same can be said about um, blood vessels. Another thing that's probably less of an issue, but a cysteine uh, disulfide formation. So basically homocysteine can form what they call disulfide bonds with a mother, an, another amino acid called the cysteine, um, leading to increased levels of homocysteine um, cysteine disulfides in the blood. Okay, these compounds have are very toxic to the endothelium as well. Um, also can cause what we call smooth muscle cell proliferation. So if you understand the mechanism of um, atherosclerosis or how the um, arteries become harder and cause plaque formation, part of that process is the smooth muscles inside the blood vessels um, can cause proliferation or increases, which can cause thickening of the blood vessel, which is, again, it's a narrowing of the blood vessel lumen or the inside of the blood vessel, which can uh, be a hallmark of atherosclerosis. And then finally, you get impaired uh, methylation. So um, elevated homocysteine levels can indicate disturbances of that. And so it's really important. Methylation is really important for many cellular processes or functions um, like lipid metabolism, gene expression, uh, protein formation function, um, which can have downstream effects for your heart health. So again, um, you would want to have these checked, especially as a plant-based person, because we are sometimes low in B12 if you're not supplementing um, adequately. Many times I will request patients to take 500 to 1,000 micrograms of B12 um, daily. And the reason I say that is we absorb a very small amount of um, any of the B12 supplements. So um, I found that that's the adequate dose to keep levels above 500 when you check your blood uh, measure. So if your B12 is above 500, you're probably okay. You don't want to get it too high either. So you, you know, anything over like 1100, 1200 be too high. So you might want to back up a little bit. Now on occasion, I will see some people who can maybe take one dose, a higher dose once a week. Um, but I found that that's just not as effective as daily dosing. The other thing you'd want to check is methylmalonic acid, methylmalonic acid. And that's another pathway that requires B12 to be further metabolized. So you can measure homocysteine and methylmonic acid and see if your B12 levels are adequate. Um, methylmonic acid being elevated is less of an issue than the elevated homocysteine in regards to your heart health and risk for a stroke. Um, so there you go, guys. Um, spoke to homocysteine. I also wanted to share with you, again, just remind you about the Healing Kitchen that I run with Brittany Giroudi. And we meet Wednesdays um, live. She, we provide, or Brittany provides, I don't, uh, the two recipes per week. And we cook them together with her and learn from her and all of her amazing experience. And then I answer all and any medical questions the last half hour. In addition, we have a premium uh, healing kitchen membership where I do workshops once a month and completely free. And uh, this month we're going to speak to what are the plant-based labs that you should be paying attention to and potentially get uh, tested. And I will also provide an ebook and homocysteine will be one of those things. I'm also encouraging people to bring their labs if they have any questions in regards to um abnormal findings or questions that they have that maybe they don't feel satisfied that their doctor has answered. And I'm happy, happy to give some insight and some recommendations. So that's um, available if you join the Healing Kitchen, the premium membership. Also at the premium membership, we do once a month um, expert workshops. <clears throat> These are on a Saturday. Again, these are free to the Healing Kitchen mem premium members. Uh, this coming month in November, we have the amazing Dr. Michael Clapper. In December, we will have Kim Campbell. And in January, we have Brenda Davis. So I'm excited to talk to these guys. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to be there. So um, again, those who join just by the workshop, you can do that as well. If you don't want to join the Healing Kitchen, um, there will be a page up later to uh, join any of the workshops that we have, uh, but you will get a free month of the Healing Kitchen just for buying the workshop as well. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, again, I'm also accepting new patients and you can find me at drmarvis.com. That's also where you can join the Healing Kitchen. Just uh, go to drmarvis.com and click. I think the link is somewhere down here. Uh, 
and then the Healing Kitchen and, and feel free to join. So thanks again for listening. I hope you found that helpful and would love to hear your comments and questions and suggestions for further videos. Um, I don't know. I uh, just kind of always want to make sure that these are um, helpful for you and I hope they find the right people. So you guys have a great day and I will see you tomorrow. And again, this is always fun trying to point all the fingers. Here we go. Hmm.